Our bread of life can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. Pilate summoned the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me as one who incites the people to rebellion. And behold, having examined him before you, I have found no guilt in this man regarding the charges which you make against him. No, nor has Herod, for he sent him back to us. And behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. Now he was obliged to release to them at the feast one prisoner. But they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man, and release for us Barabbas. He was one who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection made in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept on calling out, saying, Crucify, crucify him. And he said to them the third time, Why, what evil has this man done? I have found in him no guilt demanding death. Therefore I will punish him and release him. But they were insistent with loud voices asking that he be crucified, and their voices began to prevail. And Pilate pronounced sentence that their demand be granted, and he released the man they were working for who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. But he delivered Jesus to their will. This is the word of God. Amen. Our title today is An Account of the Suffering of Jesus. Our scripture reading tonight tells of the event shortly before Jesus' death on the cross. This is when Pilate, the governor of Rome, gives the final verdict of death to Jesus. But we see that before this verdict is rendered, Pilate attempted to release Jesus three times. This is found first in verses 15 through 16. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. He's saying that I will release him. And also in verse 20, Pilate, wanting to re release Jesus, addressed them again. Because the people didn't listen, Pilate again said that he would release Jesus. And finally in verse 22, and he said to them the third time, three times Jesus tried to release Jesus from this death sentence. However, in the end, the sound of the people's shouts and screams overruled Pilate's judgment, and Jesus was finally handed over to be crucified. Every year, we learn of these things during Passion Week. But if we look more closely into the Bible, we can see that the degree of pain that Jesus endured was far greater and far deeper than we had previously thought. So through today's Wednesday night worship, as we observe this Holy Week, I would like to share with you the account of Jesus' suffering, which we have overlooked. So, in the past, as we have overlooked the deep sufferings of Christ, let us together examine the contents of Jesus' sufferings that we have overlooked. Number one, Jesus was scourged or flogged twice before and after being sentenced to death on the cross. Crucifixion was one of the most brutal methods of execution in Rome, but it was not applicable to Roman citizens. 
This horrific method of death only applied to foreigners, slaves, and also traitors to the nation. Knowing this, what does this fact tell us? It shows us just how great and heavy the sins of all mankind were that Jesus had to bear in our place. But even more distressful than this, Jesus had to endure a beating and flogging before he was agonizingly crucified on the cross. This shows how scary, how horrific the sins were that were cast upon Jesus for our sake. So Jesus, not only did he have to endure one flogging, but he had to endure two floggings before carrying his cross. The rules for flogging were as follows. You can lash someone 40 times minus one, meaning 39 times. So each session of lashing through flogging could only be done 39 times in one beating or one flogging. And this can be found in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 11.24 Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. This is what the Apostle Paul received. Five times Apostle Paul was flogged 39 times. So this means you cannot lash anyone 40 or 50 times in a row in one session. You could only lash or flog someone up to 39 times, but then you can repeat this all over again as long as you lash only up to 39 times, take a rest, and then flog another 39 times. At that time, the whip that Jesus was lashed with through this flogging process, it was a special whip that attached to it the bones of flesh, of fish, the bones of animals that were sharpened. So every time Jesus was hit with it, not only did it strike his flesh, but it also ripped out pieces of skin and muscle. It was flogging was a truly painful and atrocious type of beating. And historical records even show that many people died after being flogged before they were even crucified. They could not withstand this type of beating even before their crucifixion. So there was no need for them to carry a cross and be crucified because they already died from this horrific flogging. However, Jesus did not have to endure this just once, but twice he was flogged like this. There are so many Christians in this world today that don't even know this, that he was flogged twice before being put on the cross. So when did the first flogging occur? Jesus was flogged before he was sentenced to death by Pilate. John 19, verses 1 through 4. Pilate then took Jesus and scourged him. This means that he was flogged. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple robe on him. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews, and to give him slaps in the face. 
Pilate came out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. Pilate says he finds no fault in him, but why did Pilate have him flogged? It was because Pilate thought that if the Jews saw Jesus bloody and in pain like this, they would feel pity on him and let Jesus go. This is what Pilate thought would happen. So in the scripture reading verses 15 through 16, Pilate says, Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. So Pilate, his conscience was pierced and he wanted to let him go. So in order to do this, he thought if he flogged Jesus and bloodied him, the people will feel sorry for him and let him go. But this did not happen. The Jews did not have this conscience that Pilate had. And that is why Jesus was not released. And when did the second flogging occur? It happened after Pilate's pronouncement that Jesus would be sentenced to death by crucifixion. Matthew 27, verses 25 through 26. And all the people said, His blood shall be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. But after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Here, Right before Jesus is to be hung on the cross and crucified, the rule is that you are supposed to be flogged. So again, Jesus was scourged. It is said that if you are hung on a cross, you can stay alive for about two days to one week. That is why dying on the cross is such a painful process. The person does not die right away, but they hang there, dying slowly, naked in front of everyone to see them, dying in pain. So, as it is written, in John nineteen thirty one, the Jews requested Pilate to have the legs of Jesus and the two thieves on the cross broken so they would die by not being able to hang on the cross because their legs gave them strength to hang on the cross. But if they were broken, then their lungs would collapse and they would not be able to breathe and they would die by suffocation. So the Jews did not have their legs be broken because of mercy to let them die faster, but the Jews wanted them to die quickly because the Sabbath was about to come about. They did not want people hanging on the cross during their Sabbath. However, unlike the thieves, Jesus was already dead and none of his bones were broken. Jesus already died because he was flogged twice before he was hung on the cross. Blood, so much blood had already been spilled out from his body. He, Jesus endured a cruel punishment that almost no one could endure. And also, what we did not know before about Jesus' death on the cross. Number two, Jesus' suffering was unimaginable. So 
everything that is recorded in the Bible is not all that Jesus suffered. This is another account of Jesus' suffering. It is said in the Bible that all prophecies will be fulfilled without omitting even one single jot or tittle, which means dot. This includes all the prophecies that were written about the Messiah that were fulfilled during Passion Week. Even though it may not all be recorded in the Bible, in the New Testament, they were all prophesied about in the Old Testament and fulfilled during Holy Week. They did so much to Jesus, not just flogging and hanging on the cross. Number one, Jesus was spat at, punched in the face, and had his beard grabbed, and he was mocked. This is what was prophesied in the Old Testament, and it is found in Isaiah 50, verse 6. I gave my back to those who strike me, and my cheeks to those who pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. So, so this shows Jesus, this is the prophecy of how Jesus would be treated in the end. And Psalm 22, verse 6, But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. This verse is also prophesying about Jesus. And the New Testament fulfills these prophecies. In Mark 14, 65, some began to spit at him and to blindfold him and to beat him with their fists and to say to him, prophesy. And the officers received him with slaps in the face. It is clearly recorded in the New Testament what was prophesied in the Old Testament. And secondly, even after being scourged, flogged, Jesus' face, flesh, and bones were disfigured and his wounds began to rot and emit a foul order. This is found in the prophecies of the Old Testament. Psalm 38, 5. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my folly. See, we see Jesus' wounds even began to rot and give a foul odor. Jesus' face was so disfigured that people would have been shocked to see him like this. Have you ever seen a person severely beaten? Jesus' face was disfigured more than this. And Isaiah 52, 14. Just as many were astound, astonished at you, my people, so his appearance was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So we see that his appearance was, moored, was marred more than any other person. People were astonished to see this. Jesus had no sin, but all the sins of mankind were placed upon him, and he was beaten as a, the most sinful man in this world. Psalm 38, 3, There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. Because of my sin. This term here should actually be read as because of the sins of all mankind. And number three, the severe flogging caused Jesus' eardrums to burst, his eyes to become swollen so much causing blindness, and his mouth was ripped open, and his teeth were broken. The Romans, as they 
be Jesus? Have you thought about how much pain he endured? How much flesh was ripped off from his body? How much blood was flowing even before the cross? Being flogged like this. Do you not think that the whips would cut across his face? Psalm 38, 13. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute man who does not open his mouth. Do you not think that these lashes from the flogging, do you not think it would touch and pierce his ears, his lips, crush his teeth? Psalm 38, 14. Yes, I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth are no arguments. How could Jesus utter one word when he is beaten like this, flogged like this, and in so much pain? The Roman soldiers asked Jesus mocking questions and said, answer. However, Jesus was silent and still. Why? Because he could not hear what they were saying, because he was beaten so severely. And how could he even speak? So they continually beat Jesus over and over again, despising him, humiliating him, killing him. Psalm 38, 10. My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, even that has gone from me. This is prophesying Jesus' last moments in this earth. And number four, a severe flogging left deep furrows in Jesus' back. And every time he fell, the soldiers stepped on him as they passed by. They showed him absolutely no mercy. Psalm 129, verse three. The plowers plowed upon my back. They lengthened their furrows. Have you ever seen farmers planting in their agricultural fields? They create furrows in the ground. And this is what Jesus' back looked like. There were red, bleeding furrows in his back. And Isaiah 51 verse 23, Who have said to you, Lie down, that we may walk over you. You have even made your back like the ground and like the street for those who walk over it. They treated Jesus less than dirt and they walked all over him, even though he was beaten, bleeding, suffering, in pain, cut open. They did not care. The Roman soldiers, like a street, they walked all over him, regardless of his state. This prophecy shows us what happened to Jesus. If you read the book of Isaiah, you can read the prophecy about Jesus Christ and what would happen to him. However, even in the midst of his excruciating pain, Jesus was able to say the word El again. Jesus, twice he received floggings before and after his death sentence. His whole body was maimed head to toe. And in the humid, hot climate, Flies gathered around his wounds, which bled, bled out and began to pus. And if this wasn't enough, while carrying his cross 800 meters to the place he was to be hung on Golgotha, Jesus fell down 14 times. Why? Because he had no strength. He was beaten and bleeding. And every time he fell, he was beaten to get up. And then Jesus would get up, he walked, and then he fell down. 
And then as he fell down, he was beaten to get up again and stepped on. And this happened 14 times. So Jesus finally collapsed for the last time after walking 700 meters as he no longer had the strength to get up. We know that the cross was 150 to 175 pounds. So at this point, the Roman soldiers dragged Simon of Cyrene from the crowd and made him help Jesus carry the cross for the remaining 100 meters to the skull of Golgotha. However, what we should be paying attention to is what Jesus said in the midst of this extreme pain and agony. We should remember what Jesus said. He said, Elegan, Elegan, over and over again. This word, Elegan, when was it first spoken? It was spoken as the first message on the cross. Luke 23, verse 34. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus' prayer of forgiveness, this was the first message he gave on the cross. Elegant, forgive. It says Jesus was saying, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And in Greek, forgive them is elegant. And it was spoken in the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense means it's a word stated as an action that is repeated or continued from a certain point in the past to the present. The other six messages on the cross were spoken in the present tense, while only this first message was spoken in the imperfect tense, which means Jesus repeatedly said elegant. In other words, this prayer of forgiveness, which was Jesus' first message on the cross, was something he said over and over again as he was being spit on, beaten, flogged, and ridiculed. And every time he was whipped, punched, spit on, he said, Elegant, Elegant, forgive their sins, please forgive them. Jesus, he kept repeating these words. Jesus, as he spoke this first message on the cross, he said it from the depths of his heart. Because how else can you ask God to forgive people when they had just beaten you, crushed you, torn out the flesh in your body, broke your teeth, made you deaf, made you blind? There is no way to say this unless Jesus was pure love. Every time he was beaten, he said elegant as they spat on him, as they flogged him, as they ridiculed him, stepped on him. Jesus repeatedly said elegant, please forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Jesus kept saying this. Dear beloved saints, why did our Lord have to suffer this immeasurable pain and contempt? Why did he have to bear this pain of the cross? Why did he have to suffer like this? Jesus had no sin Jesus is God. So why did he suffer like this? Is it not because of my sins and for yours? This is pain Jesus suffered so we would not be sent to an eternal hell. 
So then, knowing this, knowing the true pain and suffering Jesus went through, how do we pay back this grace? If you truly believe in the cross, and if you truly believe in Christ and the grace that he gave us as he suffered and died in the most miserable way, we must do as he did. We must also give unrelenting forgiveness to those who made us suffer and to those who caused us pain. We must say elegant, just like Jesus did. We must never stop saying this, never stop praying for them. We must forgive like Jesus did. Elegant, what type of prayer is this? It is a prayer that never ceases. It is a prayer that comes from, from deep within our hearts. And this is the type of prayer we must feel and pray. Tomorrow is the day of suffering. When our Lord was crucified on the cross, and the day after this is Good Friday, the day Jesus died on the cross. And what is this day called? The Friday is called Good Friday. Good Friday. And why is this day called Good Friday? That is because it is the day you and I were saved. That is why Good Friday is called this. We were saved from our miserable sins, from this miserable world. It is the day we received eternal life as a gift. Jesus sacrificed himself, suffered like this, so that we could receive a day where we receive eternal life as a gift from God. That is why Friday is called Good Friday. Should we not be apologetic for this? To make this day truly a Good Friday, let us walk fully with our Lord this entire week let us not flee from the path of our Lord's affliction, but let us be brought closer to him. May we have a closer understanding and may our hearts truly be repentant and revive in knowing that Jesus' death was given as a gift for us. I bless us upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, because of us, because of your love for us, you allowed your only son, Jesus Christ, to be afflicted and to be sacrificed on the cross for us. And now we know that Good Friday was called this day because it was a day that you gave us as a gift so we could receive eternal life from the death of your son. Please let us not take this as a day of joy, but let us be repentant. Let us be sorrowful, understanding what your son had to go through in order for us to receive this precious gift. So please awaken our spiritual hearts and let us follow the path of Christ in this holy week. May we not commit more sins but may we live a holy, faithful life. May we be worthy of the suffering of Christ, and may we be worthy of his gift to us. We entrust all things to you, and we believe our life is a gift from you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God.